we all know that one person who somehow manages to get things done. They seem to have a lot more time than we do. They seem to be doing a lot more things than we are. And they seem to be doing it in a much more calmer way than we are. And then you ask yourself, hey, is their brain wired differently? Well, it turns out, yes. Some brains are wired differently than others. And some brains are better programmed to deal with time. Now, the good news is that this is not genetically fixed. This is not permanent. Everybody can learn this. So that's the beautiful thing about today's conversation. We are going to figure out how to wire our brains so that we can manage time better. The question we are going to ask ourselves today is, how does the brain perceive time? When I ask you what time it is, you know what time it is. You look at the clock, you look at your watch, you say, hey, it's 5 o'clock, it's 5.15. Suppose if I take the clocks away, suppose if we remove all other external parameters, how does your brain perceive time? Our brain does not really have an internal sense of what time is, like it can sense light and sound, or touch, or smell, or taste. It doesn't have a sensory organ for time. The way that our brain perceives time is we want to sense the world around us and we want to keep calculating how much time will this thing take in respect to memories that we have. So the two main functions, the two main parameters that decides how time is going is A, attention and B, memory. Your attention and your memory are the two things that come together to decide how much time is passing. But there are also background things like your mood and your emotions. So these are the things, these are the players in your brain that come together to decide how much time you have. Now this might seem like a very strange sentence. Because one hour for me is one hour for you, right? No, that's not really true. One hour for me is not one hour for you because you and I are paying attention differently. You and I are remembering different things and you and I are in a different state of mind. And this, as strange as it might sound, it's not really counterintuitive. You have all been in that situation where you seem to have gotten a lot more done in the same amount of time at some points and at other points you don't even know how one hour went and you got nothing done, right? This has happened to you all. Now we are trying to understand why does this happen? And once you understand that, we can then move on to the next step, which is how can we now manipulate our brain to give us more time per hour? Ever heard of that sentence? We want to get more time per hour, per minute, per second. I'll give you another example. You have all seen DC Comics. You've all seen Batman. You've all seen Justice League. So you know the character Flash. Flash is able to run at the as close to the speed of light or whatever. Now, for Flash, you will notice that everything is happening in slow motion. So that same one second for me is not one second for him. Because for Flash, the amount of information that he is getting and processing and the amount of output that he's putting out is that many times faster. So the faster he is, the slower time is going for him. Just like that, the faster you are thinking, the faster you are processing things, the more attention you are paying to something, you are stretching out time. So you are getting more time per hour, per minute. So when you say that you have one hour, that could mean anything from having no time at all to having close to infinite time because it depends on the amount of attention that you're capable of giving. We perceive time through movement. For example, if you're looking at a still picture for an hour, you won't really know how much time has gone. But if you're looking at a movie, when things are happening, or if you're looking outside the window and you're looking at cars passing, then you have a sense of time passing because there is movement. And 
the amount of perception that you have depends on your attention and your attention in turn depends on dopamine dopamine is actually the hormone that tells your brain what to pay attention to and the more attention you pay the more time you perceive the more time you have for that thing whereas if you keep getting distracted the less time you have because now dopamine is spread out this is a quiz how many of you can tell me what happens when dopamine in your brain doesn't work what is that disease called and that person is not able to move it's called parkinsons parkinsons disease is when the dopamine networks don't work anymore so in parkinson what happens is that the person becomes like a robot he becomes very rigid stiff he has to walk very slowly he can't change his expressions he can't talk very fast he can't write very fast and he can also not perceive things very fast so if something suddenly happens he might get shocked because he cannot perceive things as quickly in parkinson patients their ability to perceive time is affected so a parkinson patient will not perceive time in the same way that a person with normal dopamine networks will perceive time and the beautiful thing is that once you treat that parkinson patient by giving dopamine now they can perceive time accurately again so that is how important dopamine is for your time perception next aspect of this is what happens when this attention and processing network goes down not because of some disease but just because you cannot remain motivated all the time now if i tell you to think of a aeroplane you will think of an aeroplane because for that one second it is something new and your brain is activating its dopamine networks and you're thinking of an aeroplane thinking of an aeroplane but after 5 seconds 10 seconds 15 seconds your dopamine level gradually falls that aeroplane isn't interesting anymore nothing new is happening with that imaginary aeroplane and your mind starts to drift and that is what you call daydreaming daydreaming is when your motivation levels start to fall your dopamine levels start to fall and your attention drifts away from whatever is the task at hand and it starts to explore the environment a new way to let their dopamine spike up again tell me how much time in a day do you think you would be daydreaming so the answer is somewhere around 30 to 40% of your waking hours is spent in daydreaming and the trickiest thing is you are not even aware of that time that you spend in daydreaming because by definition daydreaming happens when your attention level goes down when your motivation level goes down so if i ask you pichle in in the last 1 hour how long you spend daydreaming you are not really sure because you only catch yourself daydreaming now what happens when you daydream the the part of the brain that is responsible for spending attention and motivation on external things that gets deactivated and when that gets deactivated a whole other part of the brain gets activated which is a which is a part of the brain called dmn which is default mode network now imagine that the part of the brain that is paying attention outside is this part okay the outside part this is paying attention outside and this requires dopamine amongst other things the more attention you are paying outside the more you are aware of time passing yes i have 5 minutes to go i have 3 minutes to go i have 2 minutes to go but as soon as that motivation level goes down then this outside network stops working and the inside one starts working more and you go into the daydreaming mode and then somebody tells you hey what are you doing why aren't you paying attention suddenly dopamine is high up and you switch back to external attention mode and now you're aware of time again and you look at the clock oh my god how did it become 4 it was 3:30 just 2 minutes ago and that middle time was entirely spent 
under the whims and fancies of your default mode network. And this happens all the time. It happens to all of us every day for as long as we are alive. Welcome to Neuroscience.